Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer. This is Metatron is speaking. I'm going to be talking to you today about channeling Thoth. <laughs> I've been trying to channel Thoth. Uh, I don't know. Every time I try to channel him, something happens. So some actually interesting information came out of my attempts to get a message from him. So I want to kind of share that with you guys. Have you guys been getting a lot of energetic attacks lately? And the reason I ask, and I'm, I'm I'm legitimately curious about this, so feel free to um, comment if you feel like you've had energetic attacks, especially in the last like two weeks, um, because I've been having really obvious, noticeable ones. And I, at one point, I was sitting on the couch and I could feel like pressure coming down on my head, and I was like, "Oh no, an energetic attack!" So then I'm like asking my guides for help. Um, and then I felt three more, boom, 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 just like, what is happening? It took my guides like five days to properly clear me. So I don't know what in the world they did to me, but it, it messed up my ability to channel well, because it had me in a lower vibration and so I'm kind of grouchy. And when you're in that vibration, you can't hear your guides very clearly. Even with a lot of practice, I have a lot of practice. But if, you're, if, you're, if your mood is not in the right spot, you're not going to be channeling um, novels from your guides because you just, you can't. If you, if you end up channeling, it's, you're channeling the wrong person because your vibration is not high enough. Um, so it took them like five days. To fix my vibration, which is a big deal because I need to channel every day for my clients, for the sessions I have, for my videos, for the stuff I write on Medium, um, for Patreon. Like, I need it. This is what I do all day. And so, having a block to that is like stressful for me. Um, so, during this time, I'm trying to channel Thoth for a message on abundance. If you've been watching my YouTube videos, uh, I've been working on putting out eight different messages from eight different guides on eight different days during the month of August. Um, I, I don't remember what number we're on right now. I feel like we have done five of them, maybe six. I literally can't remember right now. I've put out a lot of them, but the next message was supposed to come from Thoth. So I keep bugging this guy, right? I'm like, Thoth, Thoth, I need, I need a channel message. I need a channel message. And then every time something else was happening. But I want to show you how, how I'm in a, I can be in a bad mood and I can think I'm getting hassled and I can think I'm not getting what I want. My guides are actually helping me. So... I'm asking a thought for a message on abundance. And by the way, Thoth, so Thoth is an Egyptian god. He's an Egyptian god of writing, magic, time, a bunch of other things. Um, he has a lot of characteristics that are similar to Metatron, in my opinion, because of his ability to work with time. Um, he is not ultimately the person that I'm going to channel the next abundance message from. I figured that out after this, but I wanted to show you what happened with him. So I saw Thoth appear in front of me and he's got like the ibis head on, which is like this bird with this long beak. He's got the ibis head on and the rest of his body's an Egyptian man. And he's kind of intimidating. I don't know why. There is a mysterious energy about him, no matter what. That's all I have. There's a mysterious energy about Thoth, no matter how many times I talk to him. So he shows up and I like kind of like lean over to Ra and I'm like, does he always have the Ibis head on? Like, is he, does he ever take that off? And he's like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, all right. And then so you can tell I'm in a sassy mood. You can tell I have some galactic attachments because Thoth has his Ibis head on and I'm like, what are you hiding? <laughs> like, what? why do you have this mask on? And so Thoth, he's so sweet. So he comes over to me 
and he kneels down on one knee because I'm actually, I'm like, technically I'm sitting when I'm channeling this, like I'm, my physical body is sitting, I'm channeling. He appears as standing. So he comes over to me and he kneels down on one knee so that I can look at him. And so I write down on my notes so I can look at him eye to eye. And then, and then after that, I wrote, ibis head to eye like because I can't even see his eyes so I'm like and so I was laughing at myself because I'm like ibis head to eye this is how we're looking at each other I feel slight pressure on my lips so this is him trying to be sweet with me he's like he's like you know me <laughs> I f- um I ask to feel his energy signature as pr- and, and and I'm sassy. I'm like, pressure is not the same as really feeling your energy. And I tell him, I'm like, you're always elusive with me. And I don't know if that's because I don't know why that is. I don't know if I always get interference every time I try to channel him or if he really is just elusive and difficult to channel. Um, so the pressure remains on my lips. He is touching the mouth chakra. So if you get, if you, and you can do this, you can call in your guides anytime you want and be like, uh, you know, whoever, let's be like, okay, Archangel Raphael, can you please come and touch my lips? Like you could ask him to do this. Can you please come and touch my lips? And so I can see if I can feel this. And, uh, it ta- for me, it took a long time to be able to feel energy. At first, I was like, I feel nothing. I feel nothing. I feel nothing. And then uh, there would come points every once in a while where I was like, well, I think I might have felt something, but it's not consistent. And then it just keeps building until... At some point, you can really start feeling it because it's it's just you getting used to, it's you learning to tune into all these like spiritual muscles that you've never used, right? Think about it if you had your, you have your two legs, your right leg and your left leg. And if your whole life, you didn't know you had legs and you never used them, if you go to use them, they're just, it's not going to be quite right for a while. It's the same way with your energy body. You did not know you had an energy body. You didn't know you had a chakra on your mouth. You didn't know you had, you know, all this stuff. It takes time. So the the mouth chakra, Thoth will touch it. And because I can, I'm able to really feel energy pretty, I mean, it's, here's the thing. It's going to keep getting better my whole life. But right now I'm, I'm happy with what I can feel. When he touches my lips, it um, it's like endorphins are being released. So the physical body has a reaction to the energetic touch. It's cool. Um, and so I'm sassy. Remember when he's doing this. So I was like telling him, all right, that's great that you can like manipulate my energy and make me feel all these endorphins. I was like, but that's not the same as feeling your energy. I want to feel your energy. Like I was being real persistent with it. <laughs> um, and so this was entertaining. So with the movement of his finger, so he's not, he steps back. He's not touching me. He goes like this with the movement of his finger without him touching me, he directs, lower entities out of my energy I was like whoa so I'm used to interacting with archangels and ascended masters who will never demonstrate power you're never ever gonna have an archangel come and be like I can do this I will just do this like they will never they don't do that they show up and they joke around with you and they're silly and they're loving and they can do whatever they need to do but they do not make a show of power. Thoth was doing a show of power. He's like, I can just summon whatever I want out of your body. And so this is the same. What he pulled out of me was actually demonic. Um, which if you're getting a, so I had a galactic attack, right? 
had a galactic attack where I was like, ow, my head and this, that, and the other thing. But once your vibration gets lower, now demonic energies can line up with you and cause other problems. So he's clearing the demonic energies from me. And mastery over demonic energies, this is like one of those really cool skill sets that it's shamanic. This is this is a sk shamanic skill set um, to know how to boss around the demons. Yeshua was a master over demonic energies or is a master over demonic energies. And um, another biblical figure that came into my mind was King Solomon. He also knew how to bind demons and control them. Um, so again, shamanic knowledge. Uh, impressive to watch Thoth do it, but, you know. He demonstrates it with power, which I have not seen before. Yeah. Gods and goddesses have egos so he demonstrated his power for me ego so just keep this in mind ego com coming from a place of ego coming from a place of demonstrating power is always a lower vibration always thoth can be a very uh loving guide but he's showing me his little bit of darkness when he's showing off so just keep keep this in your mind if a guide is trying to show off for you, this is a low vibration, so keep it on your radar. Um, if, if you think you're talking to an ascended master or an archangel and they show off, you are not talking to an ascended master or an archangel. This is why I recommend that people only work with like ascended masters and archangels for a long time. Because once you start working with gods and goddesses, it you have to be able to really distinguish the light and the dark and where is the light and where is the dark and how much is it and is this a problem? You have to know how much you're comfortable with and how much you're getting involved in. Just because they're a god or a goddess does not mean they are a good idea for you. Yeah, So you have to be able to distinguish more before... I would say, before you start working with gods and goddesses. Um, I think in general, um, no, you don't want me to say that. All right, I'm, I'm backing up because I was going to say something and Metatron said, don't do that. So I won't. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm just observing Thoth doing all these things and I'm like, okay. Show me your energy. Show me your energy. <laughs> I keep going back. Show me your energy. Um, so Thoth starts radiating this gold light. And it's crazy because I've had this happen many times, many, many, many times in different ways. A guide will, do, I will see them do something and then the energy uh hits me a couple seconds later so it's like the most bizarre thing because also you know i see this movement or whatever and then i'm like oh <laughs> it's like now i feel it um so he's reading this gold light it takes me a second for my body to react my body's reacting by like being pushed back so it's a strong energy after he's done i was like oh i was like feeling my face because whatever beautiful light he was radiating to me it left me feeling like my face was radiating light afterwards and so again this is bringing in like these biblical references um which i bring in biblical references because prior to my awakening I would have considered myself to be a Christian. I loved God, loved Jesus. Um, I just was unable to go to a church because every time I go to a church, I would see the hypocrisy and the darkness and I couldn't deal with it. And so I ended up being this like 
church of one where I would like sing worship songs and I would, you know, read my Bible or whatever, but I had a hard time with how the, how the, the religion part worked. Um, I'm aware now, and it makes so much more sense that some parts of the Bible are true, but a lot of the Bible is also manipulated. So I'm fascinated whenever I see, whenever I experience things that I've read about in the Bible, because then I know, okay, that's true. That happened. That's possible. So that's kind of cool. But so this is where I'm getting my references from. So there's this part in the Bible where Moses is like talking to God, but God is, has shown up as a burning bush. And after Moses is done talking to this burning bush, his face was radiating light, right? So he had been exposed to this high vibrational energy and it, it kind of implanted into his energy and then it would radiate back out. And so that's what I was experiencing. So after Thoth did that, I noticed my mind feels clearer and sharper. So think about this from the big picture. I'm being sassy with Thoth. I'm like, I just want to feel your energy. You're not doing what I want. And he's like telling the demons to get out of me. And he's like radiating this light on me in order to, he was, he had healed something. Because the fact that my mind felt clearer, he was probably like dissolving some galactic implants. Yeah, he says yes. Thank you. I never thanked him. Um, he touches the chakras on the soles of my feet. This, And he does this to show that he knows me. Because I have certain chakras where I'm like, you touch me there, you better know me. <laughs> So he, he's he's trying to be sweet with me. He's like touching my feet. He's like, you know me. <laughs> um, and so I'm still a jerk. And I'm like, that still doesn't count. I need to feel your energy. I feel pressure on my lips again. And so I kept telling him, I need, I was like, I need to feel the book of you is what I kept saying in my mind. It's like, because what happens is these energies, they'll come in front of me and they kind of flip through their energy like it's a book. They're like, all right, here's my light, here's my dark, here's my stuff I haven't processed. And so I can feel the whole thing of them. And so I was like, I need the book of thought. I need to feel this. And so he shows up in front of me as a giant book and he starts flipping through his pages. So he's being as accommodating as he can to me. With golden light radiating from out of this book. This is all of Thoth's energy as a book. In the beginning, his energy is vast, like the cosmos. Like this is all the, uh, there's no words for it. Help me make words for that. This is all the uh, cosmic knowledge, cosmic experience. This is all the um, sacred information. It just feels really vast, really big. This is, it's really godlike. So I feel this vast information in the beginning. Felt like the cosmos, really cool energy. And then he feels gentle and loving for a while. And then at the end, um, I feel suffering that he has endured. I feel uh, like this leadership and this like sovereignty energy from him. Like he, he's the boss, that kind of energy. I feel anger. And, and then at the very end, I felt a little bit of like passion. This is a long video, Thoth. Um, and then, so he finally gave me what I wanted. So I know uh, without a doubt, I'm talking to the right guy. But he's like trying to accommodate me while he's doing what he wants to do. So he does that. And then he touches my dominant healing hand. So my left hand is my dominant healing hand. And so he touches the chakra right in here where everything comes out of. And it lights up and sparkles. He increased my healing. 
He sang no. What did you do? He cleared something is what he's saying. Okay. I just assumed he was doing something with my healing ability. He's like, no, you had something here. I cleared it out with the golden light. Makes sense. So now, so you can see how long it took me to get to the point of actually flipping through the energy of Thoth so that I knew who he was. This happens much slower in real time, by the way, because uh, I keep stopping to type in my phone. Um, my children need something and then I put it down all together and I come back to it or whatever. And so I finally know I'm talking to Thoth. And so I'm kind of, I'm like happy with him. I'm like, that fat, I was referencing his energy. I said, that vastness and your energy, that was really cool. And he says, do you want to see more? And so I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me more. So stop it. Is that you? Who is that? Um, I want to cry. I had a, I had a, I felt someone's energy and it made me want to cry. And so I was asking if it was Thoth, but it's a different guide that I'm going to tell you about. So Thoth is like, Hey, you want to see more? And I'm like, yeah. And so he starts taking me on this like shamanic journey. Basically he starts taking me on this visual journey where he's showing me a different world. Right. And I realize that he has taken me to somewhere that I've been before. And I realize that I am someone, I'm a past lifetime that I've seen before. And um, if if you're somebody who watches like my videos, then you, you may recall this. Um, this is an Andromedan planet called Lior. Um, I have an Andromedan guide from that planet named Ann Leon. He looks like a, a Filipino or maybe um, Thai, like Filipino or Thai, like the dark skin, um, Asian features. Um, he's got like uh, long hair that's kind of kind of wavy, kind of curly. Um, and he wears like a brown robe. Anyways. Super cool guide. I got him from doing the Andromedan activation. So I did our Andromedan activation and I had two Andromedan guides step forward and he's one of them. And so Thoth, I had already channeled this experience that I'd had with him. I And this is a video somewhere on YouTube and I talk about we're sitting down at a restaurant and it's outside of the ocean and we're eating like egg rolls and we're eating like rice um and his mother ends up owning the restaurant and I talk about you know all these different things on this planet and I can tell that this is one of the things one of the sets of information that they want me to make that lifetime into like a book essentially or something that's equivalent because they're giving me a lot of detail and he ends up dropping me back into this storyline in another place where I hadn't seen it yet because it's funny my guides will give me these past lifetimes and they'll do really lots of detail and they want me to make a book out of it but then I like stop I'm like mm, this is gonna take a long time and I go I have other stuff I have to do but Thoth just like, <laughs> he's like, you thought we were doing an abundance message. I'm going to drop you back into this lifetime. And so he did that. I'm not going to go over what he shared with me for that lifetime. I'm going to save that for a book or something like a book at some point. Um, I feel like there was other stuff in here. Yeah. So this, me channeling Thoth, this is happening over days, guys. This is like three or four days. I'm trying to get this information. So again, I go to him and I'm like, I'm supposed to channel abundance wisdom from you. 
Can you help me? Um, I noticed there are there are glowing diamond shapes on my forehead. So he's still trying to fix me. He's like, you're not, he's basically like, you're not ready to channel yet. You're not ready to get this message yet. I need to fix you. You still have stuff on you. So he's putting some kind of diamonds on my forehead, a large one on my third eye and a smaller diamond right above that. And I'm like asking him questions. I'm like, is this like a, a stupid me? I'm like, is this a gift? Because when you're in the lower vibration, you don't always recognize it, right? You don't always recognize it. So I was like, oh, is this a gift? And he's like, no, I'm just clearing all the junk out of you. <laughs> um, and I felt work being done around the bottom of my eyes. And then I could start seeing like these golden eyelashes that he's putting on me. So he's, he's healing me, but it's just showing up as golden things um and then i see this like dramatic black eyeliner like i'm egyptian and so i was like huh and then i told him i'm like you're up to something like what are we doing and he ends up showing me a past lifetime that is traumatic do we want to do this yeah i don't think we do it's um i don't know that it serves a benefit. So I'm not going to talk about it. But basically there was an Egyptian lifetime. It had a traumatic ending to my life. Um, and he shows this to me to help me release that trauma, to help me raise my vibration higher. So again, Thoth is just doing everything he can to help me out. Yeah. Okay, that that is all of that that I want to go over. Um, man. If you are struggling with a lower vibration, let's see if we can just talk about this. I didn't plan to talk about this, but let's see if we can just kind of talk about this in the moment. So some things you can do if you feel like you've had some energetic attacks lately. The the easiest way to kind of start getting yourself out of that zone mentally is to do something like really silly or, or watch something really funny because that'll put you where you need to be. And then all you have to do is find a way to stay there versus like you're not trying to climb your way out. So normally if you like, oh, you just start singing, you just start dancing. You just uh, watch something funny on YouTube that makes you laugh. Then that'll get your vibration up. And then you just have to work on maintaining that up there. I would recommend that you use the... Um, all my words have left my brain at this time. We have a protection ritual that's free. On our website, we have it in English, we have it in Swedish. I recommend that if you feel yourself in a lower vibration, to use that because that's going to clear off uh, demonic energies and, and all kinds of different things from you. Um, if you find that you are kind of consistently struggling with lower vibrations, some of the things that you can consider are um, doing like the black magic clearing and protection session that might not sound obvious to people at first because they're like well i don't practice black magic why would i need that session you don't you don't have to have any remote interest in black magic or have hung out with anyone who's ever done this to benefit greatly from that service um what that service really does is it helps you to cut past lifetime attachments that could be allowing energies to interact with you that are not beneficial for you. So that's one step of it. The other part of that service is that it's giving you a protective amulet to protect you. So this is a piece of jewelry that you already own that I am programming with protective energies so that 
you are repelling the energies that would give you galactic implants or black magic energy cords or anything like that. Um, the only way that an amulet like that would not work for you is if you have an agreement, if you have something in your soul contract that says, yep, I allow, I allow uh, galactic attacks, let's say, for the learning. I, I'm one of those people. So I have two amazing pieces of jewelry. Both of these are from Show the Love. I always reference their information underneath my videos. So if you're interested in getting yourself a beautiful, meaningful piece of jewelry that's really high vibrational, check them out. Um, if you want me to program your jewelry, we have the protective. Um, oh, man, I can't think of any of my words today. It's like, uh, protect. I can't. I can't. Programming. Protective. I can't. We have a service. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it underneath. My brain is like not functioning. It's probably time for me to go have lunch is what this is. Um, but yeah, I have amulets. It doesn't block me from everything because if there's something I can learn from it or if there's something all of you can learn from it, then so be it. Right. Um, so consider those sessions if you need a little extra support, cause that, unless you're somebody who has a crazy contract like me, it's going to block stuff from you. It's going to help you out. Um, the only energies that cannot be blocked from anybody ever are demonic energies. Like, and demonic energies are always based on free will. So if you choose the higher vibration, if you choose to be easygoing and you choose to be more joyful and playful, then they can't touch you because your vibration is much higher. If you choose to be angry, if you choose to not reject thoughts that come in that are lower. So if you have this thought and it's a jealous thought or it's an envious thought or it's a bitter thought and you don't reject it and you just accept it and you're like, yeah, yes, I'm going to feel this. I'm going to believe this then you're opening yourself up to demons who are going to come by you and be like, they're going to try to keep you in that energy. They're going to try to perpetuate it because if you stay in that low frequency, you stay matched up with them, which means they now have a body that they can enter into you and play with. And they love that. They love entering bodies and being able to work through people. That's like a fun time for them. So this is why it's important for us to try to keep our vibration as high as possible. But realistically, realistically, we all experience demons lined up with our energy probably every week. To be really real. To be really real. Um, it's just part of living on a 3D planet. Doesn't mean you're doing anything um, horribly wrong. Just is what it is. And we all learn to work with it. Um, okay. This is everything that I have for you. I do have the remaining abundance messages that are coming out. They are not coming from Thoth, uh, but you will see that they are coming from three other individuals. So be on the lookout for those, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.